In this video, we're gonna use a simple zoom lens, natural light, and one location in an alleyway to get these portraits. Okay, so check this out. I have here the Sony a7C and it's paired with a Tamron 17-70 to f2.8. Zoom lenses are fantastic, right? They're great walk around lenses because they offer a lot of flexibility, but we don't often think about using them for portraits. And when we do, we struggle sometimes because they don't necessarily offer the depth and bokeh that you would see in a prime lens. So we end up not using them. So we're gonna stick with natural light one location in an alleyway, and I'm gonna show you some do's and don'ts with zoom lenses and portraiture. Let me go ahead and introduce you to our lovely model. This is Saran, or Lauren. Lauren Saran, why don't you tell them your Instagram handle? You can find me at Lauren Shagley. I'm just messing with her, that's her, her stage name is Saran. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with shooting wide, okay? So Lauren, what I'm gonna have you do actually is just stand right here for one second. Let's walk through what we have in this scene. So in this scene, we basically have this alleyway here in Laguna Beach. And uh, right here on this wall is direct sunlight, which we're shooting here because we get this nice fill light, right? So this side kind of offers us soft fill. This side kind of becomes our main light because the sun is bouncing off of it. Great. One of the mistakes that we often make when using zoom lenses is we get upset and kind of expect that we're gonna get bokeh or depth in the shot, right? So here we are. 1 500th f 2.8. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a shot of Lauren right there. So this is our first don't do. Don't shoot a wide angle image like this at f 2.8 expecting to get bokeh. It's just not gonna happen. That background, that depth, you don't get it on a wide angle or using a zoom at a wide angle unless we're shooting like at f 1.2 or f 1.4 with a wide angle lens. So we're not gonna get depth here, which means that that really can't be part of our compositional kind of techniques that we're using. The next thing that I don't want you to do is to get super close or frame Lauren against edges, okay? So if we get too close to Lauren or we start framing her against the edges, you'll start to see the distortion of the lens. Again, don't do this. Don't go wide angle and shoot portraits from a close distance. That's not gonna be good. What we can do though is we can use those same principles to actually help in our composition. So I know I'm not gonna get depth, right? But what I am gonna see is the entire background. What if I use the background as leading lines to kind of frame my subject? When it comes to the distortion, I can also use that to elongate the body, okay? So let's do this. Lauren, I'm gonna have you sit right here. Okay, now you're gonna extend, that's perfect actually. Bring the right knee in a little bit more. There you go. And then I want you to keep the back kind of straight and then lean forward from the hip into, that's it, right there. Okay, so from right here, knowing that I'm gonna see everything in the background, I'm gonna use Lauren's body to actually frame out the car. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position the camera so that way the, the walls of the building lead directly down and into Lauren. Okay, lean into it, make it real, that's it. I love the head tilting back, perfect. Just like that, I'm gonna frame out that car. Okay, so from this angle, we've done several things with the wide angle lens. We've used the distortion to elongate legs. We've used the distortion to also kind of exaggerate the leading lines that drop into her. We've also framed her against the highlight in the background. So this is the beauty of the zoom is we get that wide angle lens built into one single lens. Just don't use it expecting depth in your background and don't use it close to your subject because you are going to create distortions and it's not gonna be very flattering. Okay, now let's go ahead and zoom this to 35. This is probably my favorite focal length of everything. Uh, if I could only have one prime, it would be a 35 millimeter prime. I love the focal length. We get enough of a portrait, enough of a distance to capture background, it's great. But at f2.8, we're again gonna see a bit more background blur, but not a ton. But what it's great for is getting a little more like full body or like kind of mid body type shots. So what I'm gonna do now is Lauren, I'm gonna have you actually lean up against this wall here, okay? Okay, beautiful. So right there, come right against the wall. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. So I'm framing Lauren, so I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna shoot the image off to the side. I wanna bring her head again between that space. That space right there where the sky is, where it kind of leads right into Lauren. I'm gonna scoot back a little bit where we get the top of her boots. 
And Lauren, cross the leg so I get a little bit of a taper point on the thigh. And I love this because we're starting to get some depth here. But I can start working in a little bit tighter with the shots, okay? So I can start working in a little bit tighter. It's not 17 millimeters. We're going to get tons of exaggeration so we can get in a little bit closer. Now, when I get to 50 and beyond, we're going to start seeing quite a bit more depth. I would say 70 is the place where we're going to see a lot of it. 50, we're going to get a bit, okay? But at 50, we can get even closer. We can start to kind of do headshots. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do here, actually. So let's go ahead and come in close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Lauren's head to actually frame out the, the little poles in the background. Beautiful. Just like that. Love that. Gorgeous. Perfect. Okay, so look at this. These are gorgeous. We get this beautiful depth now. And even though the background is kind of junk, at 50 millimeters in F2.8, we can eliminate most of it. Now we can actually take all of it and just nix it by going to 70, stepping back a tiny bit more and doing the same thing. So I'm gonna place Lauren right between that side. Beautiful, just like that. I love those. So 50 to 70 is when we start getting a lot more depth. So when we're working with backgrounds that aren't so great, that's where we kind of want to be when we're using a zoom lens, go wide as aperture, zoom all the way in, then you're going to get some depth in your shot so you can make that part of the composition. So the other thing I wanted to point out that I'm using here is you'll notice that Lauren's in a position where we have that soft fill coming in on this side, but she's also got some hair light kind of coming over and that's what's creating that nice little highlight. So when you look at the image, you can see those highlights right against the, the, the hair on that right side and it looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is there's this beautiful white spot right here and if I put Lauren right here, I can actually get this sunlight, this catch light right in her eyes. So Lauren, go right there. I'm gonna zoom all the way in. I want depth because I want the background to look almost like a, uh, almost like a studio. Okay. okay, we're gonna go in close first. Yes. Okay, so I can even step back and we can kind of keep that. So I'm gonna go to 50 and we're gonna crop right there at uh, the hip a little bit. So let's go like this, cross over so we get that taper point again. And then let's work the hands into something different. I love the space. Give me space on the elbow so I can see behind there, right there. I'm going to zoom back in. We're at F28. Turn the shoulders all the way this way. There. Now give me the eyes right there. This is your new model headshot. Okay, so from this angle, once again, we're playing into the wide angle effect. So we're at 17. I know I'm not gonna get depth, so I'm just gonna frame so that she's composed right in the middle of these two windows. And we're gonna use her to block out that, uh, that light in the background. So go ahead and come forward. See, if I take the shot right here, you'll notice that we do still see the light. So I'm gonna just have her move this way and she's gonna come forward. So as, the, uh, as she gets bigger in the frame, she's gonna block out the light behind her. Perfect, right there. Hold that right there. There it is. That's our badass shot right there. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it shows that you don't really need that much. Even with a zoom lens that doesn't give you like, let's say the depth, it still gives you a lot of things to work with so long as you work within those limitations in terms of your compositions. If you guys enjoyed, I'd love for you to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll link up all the gear that we use in this video in the description as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.